welcome to my channel. My name is Brianne Beebe. I'm a high school math teacher. Today we are talking about filming videos for distance learning. I'm going to start out by talking about how you can film video using equipment that you most likely already have, but I will also talk about some equipment that you may choose to purchase. I will have links in the description box of any of the things that I use and that I've tried from Amazon. They will be affiliate links, just so you know. First of all, let's talk about filming yourself just like what I'm doing right now. General tips that I would say for anyone, no matter what equipment you're using, is to face your light source. A window works best. There's nothing better than natural light. So for example, I'm sitting here, in front of me is my camera mounted on a tripod, and then behind my camera is the window that's in this room. The other tip for anyone is just to smile. You're talking to your students, so just keep that in mind so that you can help yourself relax. Another thing you may want to do is do like a trial run, talking through whatever it is that you want to share in your video before filming just to get out the jitters and basically prepare yourself and it just helps you to not be so nervous. So one recording device that you most likely have is a phone. So with a phone like this, there's a camera. We'll see my setup with the window. So there's a camera on there that is front facing and I could turn it this way so that it's in video format, aim it at myself and I can record that way. And I could record a video right here on my phone without doing anything too crazy. However, you probably don't want it to be a selfie style video where we're like this and you probably want it to be something where the phone is still and standing up. So if you have a pop socket or for example, my iPad has like an easel on it, like this, you don't want to use just that to prop your phone up or, I mean, you could use your iPad for filming as well the same way. You don't want to use that though because it gives you this angle where it's just super unflattering, where you could be like super, super skinny and have four chins. So you want to try to prop your phone up in a way where it's going to be standing up straight. So one way that you could do that is to have a stack of books like right here and then put your phone up against it. It might have to lean a tiny bit just to be stable, but that's fine. Now, if I wanted to invest in equipment and use a tripod, I have two options. The first one is, the first one is this. This is a gooseneck tripod so I can bend it into different configurations. I could have my phone in selfie mode or I could turn it sideways so that it's more like a video. This one in particular that I have from Amazon, it was under $15 or right around $15 if I remember correctly because I've had this one for a while. This is a clamp right here so I can clamp it onto a bookshelf or something and that will hold my phone. The only downside to using the gooseneck tripod is that when I press on my phone to start recording, it wobbles a little bit so I have to wait like five seconds for it to stop wobbling before I start speaking and then I edit that out later. The other tripod option that I have is right here. This is a ring light that has a mount for a phone in it. So this was, I believe like $35 when I purchased it on Amazon. It has an, not an outlet, but like the plug is a USB so it could plug right into your computer. It has different settings. I'm impressed with it for how small it is and it's also really light and easy to use, but this sits tabletop and then this right here is for my phone to go in. So I can put my phone there and it also does switch around the other way so that I could hold my phone um, portrait mode. So I did not buy this to film videos on my phone with. I actually bought it to have behind my computer during like Zoom calls or Google Meets. We do Google Meet at my school, but it works the same way. So if I'm in a video call, I could have the ring light just to have some light because sometimes or actually all the time. The way that my my desk faces is it doesn't face a window, it faces this wall, or I face the wall when I'm at my desk on my computer. So having this is actually helpful just so that I'm not like that shadowy figure that they put in those TV shows where they have like that dramatic reenactment and they put the person's voice through this thing so you can't tell who it is. This helps with that. One additional option that you have for filming yourself is to use the webcam on your computer if you have one. However, the thing is, I don't know what computer you have, so how you're able to record from the webcam depends on your computer. 
I should have also used this disclaimer at the beginning. I have Apple products, so I have an iPhone, an iPad, and then a MacBook. So it's easy for me to switch from one thing to another and to use them together because they're all from the same company. So now let's talk about if you wanted to film yourself doing some kind of demonstration where students needed to watch your hands, like if you were demonstrating how to use manipulatives, for example. So in this case, you really want to shoot your video overhead. So you want your phone to be up above what you're filming, laying flat, and you could achieve that using the gooseneck tripod. So I would configure this, and this is really stiff because it's good, like it doesn't adjust on itself other than that little bit of swaying when you start recording, but I could have it like that so that it's flat and it takes some playing with but again this attaches on to a bookshelf or for me the thing on my desk it will attach there pretty easily so I can do overhead videos that way. Another way to capture such a demonstration would be to use a document camera. This is one thing that I do not have experience with. I do not own a document camera. I do not have one to recommend but I am certain that a document camera would be a little bit more stable than a gooseneck tripod with your phone and possibly better quality. I'm not sure, it depends on which one you get. The upside to a document camera is school districts usually have them, so you might be able to acquire one through your school, whether you're in your classroom or possibly at home. But the document camera hooks up to your computer so you can see what your document camera captures on your computer screen. Once it's on your computer screen, you can do a screencast, which is a recording of what appears on your computer screen. When it comes to screencasting, you have a lot of options. If you are a Mac user, you have QuickTime installed on your device automatically and it's free. You don't have to pay anything extra. Another free option is called Loom. It's a website where you can do a screencast. You can also include a box from your webcam so you can see your face while viewing the screencast at the same time. Another thing that does that is Screencastify, which I've heard is popular. And I know that I've used it like in grad school, so it was a long time ago. I really don't know what it's like now. But what I personally use is Screencast Omatic. And that is something that I purchased um, a three year subscription to when I had a PC last year. So I've loaded it onto my MacBook and I still use it there. And I like that I can have the screencast and use the webcam at the same time so you can see my face as you're watching whatever I'm screencasting. And that one I find to be very easy to use. The third type of video that you might want to make for your students is a screen recording. So again, kind of like what we're talking about, but that was specifically on your computer. You could, however, create a screen recording using your iPad. If you want to make a video where you're demonstrating something but you don't necessarily need to show your hands and if you have the equipment to do so, I really love using my iPad to do screen recordings. I have a second channel just called Busy Miss BB Teaches and that's where I've been putting my lesson videos for my students. All of these videos are me showing how to solve problems and filling in notes while narrating at the same time. So if you want to see an example of what this looks like, you can check out my other channel. But Basically the reason why I'm making this video now is because a lot of people have been asking me how I made those videos. Unfortunately for this option there is no getting around the need for equipment. So you would need a tablet and a stylus. Personally I use an iPad with an Apple Pencil. And then as far as which apps to use you have a lot of options. I know some people like to use the GoodNotes app or the Notability app because they are PDF annotation apps so you can put your notes in PDF form into those apps. I am so tired of that word apps. But you put them into the app and then you can draw and doodle and do whatever you would normally do on the screen so that students are able to follow along with what's going on. What I do though is I use Smart Notebook. It is free to download on the iPad and that way it's familiar. It's what I normally use when I'm teaching lessons and it's kind of familiar to students although it looks a little bit different. But basically I have all my notes here and I'm able to take a Smart Notebook file as I would normally have it and put it onto my iPad. It goes right into Smart Notebook and I just record the screen while I'm going through a lesson on there. And I would say if you're using one of the PDF annotation apps instead of Smart Notebook, make sure that you turn your iPad sideways when you're going to present it so that it fills the screen. So remember that the iPad has a screen recorder already built in. You can record your screen using that. Just make sure to turn on the microphone. 
What I did this past spring with distance teaching was I used the Screencast Omatic app because I was so used to using it on the computer. Now, on the computer, I love Screencast Omatic. I do not recommend that app whatsoever. It was terrible. A lot of times I would finish teaching something and then it wouldn't save. It would just disappear, the whole recording. So don't use Screencast Omatic on the iPad. Just go with the screen recorder that's already there. So now the only equipment that I didn't talk about yet is a microphone. The microphone that I used in the spring was this. So this is just the um, earbuds that come with your phone or your iPad. I'm not even sure, like this is the old school one. So I had this plugged into my iPad and this is what I was using for a microphone. I had it in my ear and the microphone's right here. So it's pretty simple. What I don't like though, I mean, this is the option that you use if you don't want to buy anything, which is fine. Um, you might want to like hold it while you're recording or something because like my hair would rub on it, I guess, a zipper, if I had a hoodie on, just different things, it would like touch and you would hear it in the recording. So that was frustrating. And it's one of those things that bothered me because I'm a perfectionist, but people like watching the video probably didn't notice. The other thing is that using that microphone really captured all the taps of my Apple Pencil on the screen and that was really annoying too. Now to make videos for this upcoming year, I purchased a microphone. So this is it, it's tiny. It's a lapel microphone. So it's this tiny little microphone right here and it has a clip. So it clips onto my shirt. So it's going to be stationary. It's not gonna be moving around and rustling with whatever. And this also turns on here so I can point it where I want. I'm hoping that this piece will dampen any taps from the Apple Pencil. It has the same kind of audio jack as the earbuds that came with my iPad, so I'll be able to plug this right in. Now, I did use the microphone previously. It was in my video for my digital planner. I plugged this into my computer and it worked just fine there. I have not done it on my iPad yet. I'm excited to use it though, so once I do, I will do like a little update. I'll pop it in the description box. I don't plan on making videos too soon. I definitely want to get closer to when school starts, but at the same time, I know people will be needing videos, so I kind of also want to get ahead on making them. And these are videos for geometry teachers, by the way. So I would just like to stress that you do not need any fancy equipment to create videos for your students. You could figure it out using what you already have. That's the thing that made this video kind of difficult to make. I feel like this is just an overview. As far as how to actually use everything, you kind of have to go through Google to look it up. I would love to sit down and make that video for you and just step by step by step how to do every little thing. The problem is not everyone has the same equipment that I have or you know, you have something different, your school wants something done differently. It's just a lot and there's no way for me to do all the detail that you might possibly need. But just know that Google is there. Whatever you wanna find out, you'll be able to figure it out. You can ask me, you can ask other teachers. Just don't worry, because we are a community, we have your back, we're gonna figure this out together. And then video-wise, I just wanna stress that your video does not have to be perfect. Can we take my channel as an example? My editing is so choppy, but it serves the purpose of just sharing information. I don't care that my editing's choppy and this is not like super professional editing or anything other teachers have like really fabulous youtube channels where they do all kinds of special effects and different things i'm happy with this just the way it is just keeping it simple but in speaking of editing i did want to share two things that i frequently use to edit the first one is imovie which is available on it is on the iphone i believe and it's on the ipad and the mac of course so that's a very simple editing tool. And then the other editing tool that I use a lot is InShot. InShot is free, but you can upgrade to Pro for, I believe it's $2.99, which is not bad at all. And InShot I've had to use because I did videos um, overhead of my hand showing something. So I did a tutorial on my iPad for how to use GoodNotes. And I did that using my gooseneck tripod in my phone. So when I had to edit it, what I needed to do was actually rotate the video because when I film it, it films upside down. If I were to film it right side up, it would have the tripod in the picture. There is a way around it now that I realize in my head if I just tilted the camera differently. But anyway, that's what I had to do. So InShot will allow you to rotate video. Um, iMovie does. I know how to do it on the Mac. I could not figure out how to do it on my phone, which is why I got InShot. 
And then for editing, all I do is make a cut at the end of footage that I want to keep. And then I go to the beginning of footage that I want to keep. So I have two cuts and then I just delete the section in the middle. I hope that made sense. But if not, I will happily answer questions. But now that is all that I have. If you have any additional tips for other teachers looking for this information, please leave them in the comments below as well as any questions you have. And as always, thanks for watching.